Hello everyone, welcome to Luis Santos podcast. This is my second podcast is, uh, uh, and I'm really happy to bring here my man Sam. Uh, he's been a guy who he's approached me for a tattoo, a South American tattoo. And I was so happy to, I was thinking, you know, when we finish our tattoo, I definitely need a podcast with Sam. Wasn't it, Sam? Yeah, man, it did, it did. It's been a long time in the making. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool as well because it was his first tattoo as well and he didn't know where to go to, you know, and he was like looking for a place to go, but because his tattoo was about South American culture, right? Yeah. You know, he was very, he looked into it and as soon as he found out that I was from South America, he resonated with it. And that's why I thought we could do a podcast to talk about that because, you know, I'm South, I'm South American, his parents are South American, and uh, we can maybe talk about South American culture, you know, and and everything about culture, the vibes, the spirituality about South America, you know. And all that, uh, I really try to put that to his tattoo, you know, because I feel like when you resonate with someone's tattoo, you really, you really do it with your heart, you know, because I was born in South America. And he chose to get a South American God, wasn't wasn't it? It was, man. Yeah. Was. So, yeah. So you, your parents were from from South America, then? Yeah. So both my parents are both from Mexico. Um, it's a bit of a weird story. They kind of met over here in the UK, and this is where they had me. But originally, yeah, originally from Mexico, kind of been brought up with kind of you know South American or kind of like Central American like values. Uh, Spanish isn't bad. And, uh, and yeah man, it's just been quite a big part of growing up because, especially in the UK, there's, I have probably in my life in the UK met, other than my family members, probably met two other Mexican people. Wow, <laughs> wow, <really? laughs> So it is kind of hard, especially when you want to get a tattoo, obviously it was my first tattoo as well. Um, I want something that's important to me, I want something that's obviously specific to me as a, as a person as well. And because obviously... I've lived my whole life in the UK. Sometimes you do get a bit distanced from kind of a, where you originally come from. So like, obviously my parents, they had a whole thing of, you know, they spoke English when I was around. They kind of taught me English before they kind of taught me a bit of Spanish because they oh, wanted yeah. me to give the, or they wanted me to have kind of the best opportunity whilst I'm here in the UK. Um, but as I kind of got older, I kind of obviously learned a bit more, especially over lockdown, kind of delved into my parents' history a bit more, kind of where they're from, kind of where my family's from. And uh, and yeah, it's, it's something that now I've obviously got a tattoo on it, something that's going to stay with me forever. In a way, you know, I can never forget. No, I can never forget where I come from. I think like we, even though that you were not born in South America, because your parents are from South America, uh, you almost have uh, like a feeling to it, like almost like you you belong there in a, mm. in a way because yeah. your blood is, is South American, you know, but yeah. you're born here. So I bet you any money, if you go, if you go to Mexico, you're going to feel like you belong there in a way, even was, though you've probably never been there. Have you been there? You've not been to I've South America? I've not been, yeah. no, I've not been. But like, it's, yeah, it's one of them. Like, the kind of the closest I've come to it is, come on, it's not the same, the kind of the European cultures. I say I've been to, we go to Spain a lot. I've got family who, came from Mexico, they're living in kind of Spain, Portugal now, they're the ones we kind of visit. And it's, it's not the same. A lot of people do get kind of confused saying that it's the same. It's not the same, but obviously the similarities are kind of there in a way, um, in terms of kind of the culture, obviously with the language of some bits of the food. Um, but it's just that kind of, yeah, it's just that kind of like warmth of like, you know, you belong somewhere, kind of like that feeling of- That's home. how I feel like when I go to Brazil, you know, even though and I've been here for so long now and I feel breaches in some ways, cause I've been here for so long. Mm. I'm so used to be here now today. Some people say, oh, England is so cold, but but I'm like, I'm so used to it now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind yeah. of used to it because it's here every day. However, when I go back to Brazil, I feel like almost like a sense of like, I belong there, you mm. know, in, uh, you know, in a way. That's why I believe when I'm an old man, I probably go back to Brazil because I'd yeah. like to, if I get to my, to my later years, you know, <laughs> Uh, I would like to see the last years of my life where I come from, you know, to be in my... But I feel like I have uh, also... Uh, it's not even that I'm here mm. because uh, I feel like I came to England for a purpose, like to work here and to live here. Like I have a daughter here, so I do have a family here, but I don't feel like here is wrong. I feel like here is like part of the journey. Yeah. And then one day I'll be going to where I come from. 
and hopefully all my friends from England can come to see me in Brazil, <laughs> including you as well. Man, if you want to come to South America, man. I'll be there, mate. I'll be there. Where's, where's, the, where's the place called? Is it, is it Salamanca? Or is it... Sao pa- I was born in Olinda. 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 I was born in Olinda. I was brought up in Sao Paulo. Bro, if I brought an English person to Brazil, I would bring him to the north of Brazil, to Olinda, because Olinda is more cultural. It's got beaches, it's got the food, the culture. The culture is in is on the north. If you go to the south of Brazil, it's more like uh, how can I say? It's more Europeanized. Like it's more yeah, like work and buildings, and yeah. it's more. You feel, you feel like you are in London, basically. Where was the know? place that you told me? Was it was it Salvador? Salvador, yeah. Where all the Brazilians go to party. You yeah, take me that, there. Take me there. <laughs> no, that part, that part of South America, but yeah, Salvador mm-hmm. is the beginning of the north. Is it? Yeah, okay. it's like below that is like the south of Brazil, but this is like the coast of the, of the north in Brazil, but yeah, Salvador. Yeah, it's a very spiritual country now. And uh, the carnival over there is like, so I think it's the best carnival in, in the world. Mm. It's by yeah, Salvador. Of course, uh, Brazilians they will discuss and oh, it's real. No, it, it's it's Olinda, yeah. Yeah. There's so many places, but I think Salvador, in my eyes, is the best I've seen. I went there in 2020 and I was blown away. You know, it's such a it's such a spiritual place as well. It's where the it's where the slaves came over to Brazil to build Brazil there, and uh, you still have the Africans, and then you've got the Europeans. You know, there's a lot of history brought from the Portuguese. The Portuguese, they uh, they enslaved the Africans, and then the Africans they started to do like uh, parties, yeah. pretending they were partying, but really they were doing martial arts. Yeah. That's why it came in the capoeira. Oh, okay. You know, capoeira. You know, capoeira yeah, yeah. came from that. It came from like slaves trying to protect themselves, but they didn't know how to, so they pretended to the Portuguese that they were partying. And uh, that's why Capoeira is dance to this music. Crazy. Mad, right? Yeah, yeah. So they were making music. So the Portuguese for all, they were dancing, making music, but they were practice how to in defend reality. them in reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were creating a martial art to defend themselves. Someone, somebody told me something uh, similar to that yesterday. So uh, when we were recording this, last night I watched the, um, what was it? It was Smith versus Eubank Jr., the boxing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Boxing match last night. And I remember I was chatting to my mate about it, and he said, um, so you know Lomachenko, the, he was kind of pound for pound number one. Apparently, uh, so the people who are, who are like unbelievably good at boxing, obviously raw talent, really good, almost kind of like born to do it kind of thing. But when he told his parents when he was like a kid that he wanted to do boxing, his dad instead put him in a ballet school, like a, a ballet dance school, so then he'd be light on his feet, so and he'd have the footwork. So then when he started boxing, he'd just be that much better. I believe in that, you know, because I believe in that because uh, Bruce Lee was very good at dancing as well. Mm. He's very good at touch. I believe martial arts is a dance. Yeah, you dancing. I mean, like you, you, you have to be a good dancer in order to be a good fighter. Mm. Bruce Lee was champion at Chacha. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, yeah, he was it. like he used to win competition of Chacha, you know. So. Yeah, that's why, you know, I find it funny because when I first came to England, uh, UFC wasn't wasn't there. No, yeah, it yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. E- exist. And I remember working in a building site and, they, and one of the builders said to me, uh, how come there's not many Braz- uh, Brazilian boxers? And I said to him, because in Brazil we fight with our legs we, uh, uh, and our arms, you know. Mm-hmm. Boxing is just this. Body, yeah, yeah. You know, Brazilian, South Americans, we dance more, so we are more like we do more than just box we do spins we we kind of dance with the fight i mean so now uh ufc is on now and mm. all the brazilians came to ufc but that's more like us 100%, that's our art you know we have to be more free you know in order to uh to develop ourselves to express ourselves mm. i don't think a brazilian could fully express themselves in boxing no because boxing is very like it's limited it's limited yeah and i mean yeah. don't don't get me wrong i think boxing is a great sport mm. i i love boxing but i used to have a friend and he was from he used to be a capoeira teacher and he was a doorman in a bar in leeds really <laughs> and he said every time guys are drunk they just go like that yeah. he used to yeah. get from the floor <laughs> You need, to tell, you need to tell me what bar, so I don't, so I don't run into it. Yeah, Capoeira, man. Capoeira is dangerous, man. Capoeira is like... I've seen some videos of it before, kind of on YouTube and stuff. Do you know, I find that people laugh because they say Capoeira is the non-touchable martial art. 
However, it's a non-touchable martial art, so you, you don't die. <laughs> Because if you're because the power of a punch of a kick is in a spin, and the capoeira spin is the highest, is the quickest spin they can have. Is it? So if you there are illegal capoeiras in Brazil that people pass away, uh, illegal capoeiras are the one that you touch it, it, each other. Man, if you do a quick spin on the right on the wrong place, you're gone, man. Crazy. Yeah, some people die in Brazil because of capoeira. Mas- so I used to work in a building site, and these guys used to laugh at me. <laughs> If you say, oh, capoeira is a non-touchable martial art, I'm like, that's to keep you safe, man. Yeah, <laughs> but people don't get it, because they see people dancing, no touch, and they think, yeah. oh, this is stupid. Like. It's all of an illusion, bro. It's all of an illusion, <laughs> literally. Can I go back to...